this will be a retrospective look into my own performance. It has been about 1 year, about 1k MMR gain, so let's take a look at what things I am better at. As is tradition, this topic will feature Midstorm's perspective, and as such, is oriented a bit more towards flash farming mid-type heroes, but naturally, the ideas themselves can absolutely be applied to any other hero and position. Let's begin. Number 1. Dynamically choosing the starting items. When you know your matchup, you can adequately prepare the amount of region you will need for that matchup. In this match, against Viper, I will need to double down on my region and then send out additional salve right away too, because Viper's Q is one of the most damaging spells in the game. If he doesn't have mangoes to refresh his mana pool, just a salve or just a tango should be enough for me. But if he does, he will knock down my entire HP pool real fast, so in advance I come over prepared for the worst case scenario. Number 2. Calculating the risk of trading. Best example is right here on the screen. Normally, I'd walk up to the creep wave, hit the ranged creep a few times, then use a remnant to secure the attacked melee creep and the ranged one at the same time. Naturally, I would take some damage in the process, but in this particular scenario, the Viper has overblocked his creeps and they ended up inside a tower range. Instead of doing my usual routine, I will simply wait out for the tower to push the wave back to me, last hitting safely under my tower, and taking way less damage than I would if I paraded around in the middle of the river. And this extends even further, enter number 3, manipulating wave placements. Because I know that keeping the lane static will let Viper get in the most free harassment hits, I will do my best to keep the waves bouncing between towers. I can use creep aggro to force range creep down, I can use fast entire wave clears with the remnants, the goal is to always hold the wave in the river for as little time as possible. Should the creeps end up on the enemy high ground outside of tower range, I will go stack jungle camps in the meanwhile. Worst case scenario, if Viper holds the lane instead of pushing, I will pull the creeps back down and use my extra region to recover from the harassment I would take in the process. This is of course matchup specific and will require different strategies every game. If you're a Bloodseeker going against Necro for example, holding the wave and last hitting everything is your own best option. Number 4. A small one. If you are playing a mana intensive hero, make it a habit to include a clarity with each and every one of your purchases. It's just 50 gold, you're sending yourself cheap components anyway, and you never know where you can find a neat little downtime between actions to recover some mana. Always have clarities around. Number 5. Also a small one, but with great impact. Remember how I mentioned wave manipulation? Well, fortification helps with that aspect and is an especially powerful tool in the mid lane. At minute 4, if you can, ideally, you'd want to double wave the enemy under his tower. If that isn't feasible, a single wave under his tower is also good. And if for some reason that action isn't possible either, then you can use fortification to hold the creeps in place, while you travel out to pick up the rune. Now your opponent has two options, chase after you and lose the lane creeps, or stay without fortification and let you collect your rune. And to expand on that, fortification also works wonders if you plan to dive the enemy under his tower, or deny a prepared last hit, or straight up force a creep advantage for a few seconds. So many uses when you have the imagination. Moving on. Number 6. Another very useful habit is to constantly check enemy's items with each 3 second you find. On screen example, one moment Viper has an observer, another moment he doesn't anymore. Guess what? You've just discovered a war placement by simply keeping tabs on his inventory. Number 7. Managing your jungle resources. Let me elaborate. During early game, your source of income comes from three things. Lane creeps, jungle creeps and hero kills. Hero kills are highly situational, but lane and jungle economy you can control. In this match, by level 6, I have little resistance staying in mid and collecting my farm off lane creeps, so that's what I'm gonna do. Lane creeps are worth more than jungle creeps, so as long as you can hit those uncontested, you should. Here's where the nuance lies though. At a certain point, you should not only be able to clear lane creeps, but have enough time to begin incorporating jungle ones into your rotation. Typically, if you leave the lane, you'll want to return to it by the time the next creep wave meets. This time window will be vastly different each match and will depend on many factors in the match. In this one, Viper can clear the lane creeps just as fast as me, so that already reduces the timing. On my earlier levels, I will only leave to take the rune and or stack. 
As I collect more items and levels though, I will be able to both claim a jungle stack and return to the lane in time. Number 8. Rune Management Small tip, many applications. Nowadays, I often find myself holding out the rune until I find a perfect moment to use it. This applies to the better ones like Haste, DD or Arcane. In this match, I am going to use the Haste rune to help me secure the following rune, which would otherwise be contested by the opposing mid laner. This directly translates into my next move and likewise my next point. Number 9. Plan your map movements with the objective's timing. With my freshly secured DD rune, I will now look for opportunities to make plays. And by the time the bounties roll around, that's where you have the biggest chance to make impactful moves. You will either collect some kills or at the very least secure an outpost and or runes. After each big adventure, make sure to keep a TP handy to return back to your original lane. An opponent might use the time you're away to pressure the tower and the instant TP back counters such plays. Number 10. The biggest and most abstract one, Game Sense. This means keeping an active mental map of where each hero on the match is, what can the enemy do to you, how can allies help you, what kind of items everyone is working towards, and the list goes on and on. As long as you're actively thinking about the bigger picture of the match, you're on the right track. Since explaining game sense is such a broad topic and can't be fit into one sentence, I'm just going to use a very simple example from current match. We just had a fight mid, a full scale fight which forced a lot of teleportations and cooldowns. After the fight, enemy Wraith King feeling all powerful is marching down bot and threatening a tower. What information did they gather from previous fight? TP's on CD, BK's ult on CD2. Using this information, we can conclude that he is way out of position and even if he runs to his tower, we should be able to secure a kill before anyone is able to help him. Wraith King himself isn't aware of these conditions and seems to AFK on the tower, eventually being punished for it. And that's it. There's way more little things that I can fit into the topic, but I think these 10 points are what helped me climb the most. Hopefully, you can incorporate some of those into your own matches and climb better too. This concludes the topic. I am leaving you with the rest of the match. Thank you for watching. Good luck.
warning. Tower full? Oh, I'm just going to use my shape from 